35 through 31. That means we start with 35 in your top 40 quarterback list in 2024. Your 35th best quarterback is? Yep, and a guy we probably could have lumped together with those, you know, the, the old quarterbacks we ended off with on, on uh, Monday afternoon. But it is Jameis Winston. Right, we start number thirty-five. Yeah, he's in Cleveland. He's behind Deshaun Watson. He's a little bit Joe Flacco-ish, mm. right? To where, yes, you know, hey, if he has to come in, he could open up some eyes and make some big plays and do that, right? Arguably, here's what I would say: my headline would be arguably the best big play backup quarterback in the NFL. That's what I would say. When he comes into a game, I mean, he's going to stand in the pocket. He is not going to flinch at all. And he is always looking to push the ball down the field, right? Always looking like, you know, always looking for the big play. Always, you know, sometimes when I got on some of the other guys on the list the other day where, hey, take an extra pat. You know, that guy's about to come open. You're protected. Like, it's a 20-yard income. Let's hit it. And then maybe it becomes 40 yards, right? He always gives it a chance. Now, that's also his flaw to a degree, all right? That, that, that's the negative is sometimes it's like, okay, wait, no, no it, I know you think it's about to come open, but this is the third pat. You got to let it go. You're going to get sacked. You're going to get stripped. What, right, right? That's the issues with him. And then at times, like – you know, again, too, what I, I love is aggressive frame of mind and, you know, he just his aggressive nature altogether. But, yeah, there's also a handful of throws that you could take from last year, the, the preseason, whatever, and just go, what, did you really think you were going to fit that in there? Like, what the hell are you thinking, right? He's got a little of that aspect, too. If you took his positive plays and the positive, and you heard this on text yesterday when I was kind of going back and forth with you, right, and you just looked at positive for the most part, You'd go, damn, this guy's a he's a pretty big time starting quarterback in the NFL. But he has a little bit of I just don't give a fuck about him that you cannot trust. And that's the bottom line. I mean, you watch the game sometimes and you just go, he just coming in and having fun and he he doesn't care. He I don't think he even cares. He's going, I'm gonna throw a big completion or I'm gonna throw an interception, but I'm gonna have fun out here. Um, I mean, it really feels that way at times. And because of that frame of mind. It probably knocked him down a few spots because you heard me in the text yesterday. To me, it's more about trust with Jameis. And as much as I I would rather call the offense for Jameis maybe than some of the other guys we have in front of him here, mm. right? Because I'd go, oh, this is my kind of offense. This is what I want to do. We're going to protect him. He'll throw the ball down the field. He'll do all that. You have everything, everything. available right. to you. But also within that offense, I go, well, damn, he might throw six interceptions today if we don't call the game the right way and protect him from himself a little bit. So those are kind of the pluses and negatives of Jameis yeah. Winston. Uh, but – yeah, the guy has talent. There's no doubt about that. Yeah, Pete has put narratives in here for all the quarterbacks that we'll talk about in your top 40 list, right. and I think this one is spot on. The narrative around him is he's the 30-30 man. That, you know, it could be 30 touchdowns, could be 30 interceptions. YOLO, you only live once. That's basically what, what Jameis is. Right. Uh, so you know, the way you described him is, is some, somewhat similar to the way that you could describe Joe Flacco. And yeah. You did describe him last exactly. year, and he was the backup in Cleveland. I know there are probably Browns fans that are thinking, Hey, what did we do? You had Flacco at 37. Now you right. have Jameis at 35. Not a whole lot between them. We've seen Flacco step in yeah. and be able to carry that team That's right. to the playoffs. That's right. I don't doubt this, that so this could do this, and it could be better than Joe Flacco. So that would be the question, yeah. right? You, you still, if you're the Cleveland Browns, you would take, even if it's a small upgrade, you would take this upgrade from Joe Flacco to Jameis Winston. Well, I, I think it's not only the small upgrade, but I think it's the other things and the context around the situation why they went there too, Right. Right, it's like Joe Flacco, hey, he won a Super Bowl and that fan base latched onto him a little bit. Definitely. And I think that was a little scary for them, right? Like, like I talked about. I, t I asked them this question at the Combine. Are you kind of glad you don't have to deal with the Flacco thing, right? Because like, if we got to like week three and they were one and two and Deshaun isn't playing good, Flacco, Flacco. I mean, they were chanting that at the end of the year last year. Right, so that's what did you know. I think you, did they give you an answer? Well, <laughs> I, I think they tr they tried to act like that didn't matter, yeah. right? Which I don't buy, and I think that's part of the reason they let Joe Flacco go because they don't need that headache around Deshaun Watson in their quarterback room. Everyone views Jameis Winston as a backup, but I can tell you from coaches who have watched him in free agency and stuff the last few years, people always come away amazed with Jameis Winston going, damn, he's good, damn, I think I can fix some of those issues. 
and I just don't know if you can fix them all the way, right? It, Sean Payton definitely fixed them to a degree and reined them in about as good as anybody that can rein them in. Uh, that'll be, you know, something that he'll, you know, you'll have to worry about with him in Cleveland too, and Kevin Stefanski will have to rein them in as, as well. Reining them in at the end of a game when you're setting up to take a knee. I, I looked back on that just because I'm so fascinated by that play. It was, and it really was. Like I, I was like, okay, let me make, make sure I can wrap my head around what happened here. Jamal Williams was on the team, 17 touchdowns the year before, had not had a touchdown the entire year. And so you get to the last minute of this game, yeah. which, by the way, was set up by an interception. Tyron Matthew had like a 74-yard interception return down to the one-yard line when they're already winning 41-17. It was Chris Lindstrom from the Falcons who like ran him down somehow and messed him up enough to where he fell down at the one yard line right and then so there's like a minute left and, and Jameis was like we're gonna get Jamal Williams his one touchdown this yeah. year because he had 17 last year the man has to end at least with one right uh that was fascinating to me and that's probably why he's not back in New Orleans well right now. It, you know it, it caused some problems for Dennis Allen with Arthur Smith after the game and yeah. you know him having to answer questions there right you know it, it's not a it's not good for Jameis and the fact of, yeah, his own coaches were like, damn, well, I don't like that, and you're going to feel like you have no control over him. Yeah. Those are kind of things other than the locker room. I bet you they were loving him after the game. Like, Jameis, you're the man for doing that for Jamal or doing that, right? That, that will get you some, some street cred in that department. But I think it goes a little into the, yeah, how much can you trust Jameis altogether category. I'm not trying to be a jerk by that. That's the perception. The perception is the reality in the NFL of what's thought about him, you know, in that way. And, you know, I will say this too, right? Uh, you know, he is – He's a solid athlete, but for 2024 quarterbacks, he's about average for the NFL quarterback of this day and age, right? He does – he has a strong arm. It's not a wow arm. He's not a great spiral thrower. He does have a long windup, right? I mean, mm. if you think of Jameis Winston, it's a windmill, windmill type of release and throw, right? And because of that and all the moving parts, he can lose control of the ball just a hair at times, right? But I will say that offense didn't fit him either. He's not made for West Coast Derek Carr dink and dunk. Yeah, That's that not sense. what he is, right? He is a, hey, let him drop back. Let the field open up. He'll make big throws down the field and do that. You want more of that than, oh, quick throw, right on target, precision, right? He's not that because of that long release and the, and the space he needs there. Uh, but Jameis Winston still dangerous, and I, I wouldn't be shocked if Deshaun Watson got hurt, which is, you know, him staying on the field is a big question. The, can he get some mojo going with that Browns football team and win some football games? I, I don't think there's any doubt he can. Yeah, the Browns have said that they are open to carrying three quarterbacks, which all teams do with an emergency quarterback, but I guess that means maybe just three on the, yeah, the active, active roster. roster. Yeah, so they got right. Tyler Huntley there now. They yeah. got DTR uh, Dorian still. Thompson Robinson right. there still. Right. So they do have some quarterback talent. They do. And, you know, I don't you know, I I I, I don't know how that goes there. You know, they maybe they stash Tyler Huntley away on the practice squad, mm. right? Cuz Dorian Thompson Robinson, I'd be afraid with that guy, young guy, got some talent, I do think has some pedigree. If you cut him and he has that 24-hour like hey, window where you know, he's free and out there. Somebody might look at it and go, hey, we're actually – we'll put you on our third guy on the roster all the time, right? And then he's going to be gone. So I'll be interested to see how they juggle that situation there. All right, the Cleveland Browns, 35th best quarterback in Jameis Winston, his 10th year in the league upcoming. Yo, 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 what's up? Thanks for watching, homies. You know it's the offseason, but there's no offseason with Chris Sims on Button. We're, it's the NFL. It goes all year around, all right? So hit subscribe, please, to hear my thoughts on your favorite team, your favorite quarterback, and, hey, how this season might unfold as we get ready for the 2024 season. we got a better picture, clearer look now, now that the draft is over free agency we know who's playing quarterback for certain teams so again thanks for watching and remember to subscribe peace out homies check you out soon